Ooh, it's 4.6 inequalities of polynomials and rational functions. That's right, we're bringing both polynomials. That's Officer Gregorio's favorite math word, polynomials. If you see him in the hallway, be like, yo, Officer Gregorio, polynomials and rational functions. All right, I'm pretty psyched. It's game day, Thursday, Bears, Thursday night football. This is not going to make sense if somebody's watching this a year later, but whatevs. All right, I'm all bared out. Got my Bears mask. Yeah, there it is. Okay, let's hop to it. Let's hop to it. Um, you might notice a slightly different layout here, right? I learned some things about this program. Check this out. There's all the tabs. Now they're gone. And now we got Mo Room for Mo Math. Mo Math, Mo Problems. I believe that was an old um, rap song, right? Yeah, I think so. Anywho, um, g Easy has an open top box manufacturing company. Look at that, we're bringing back a little polynomial action, a little polynomial app. The company's slogan is, no top box is the easy box to open. That's a pretty solid slogan, I'd say. I'm happy with that one. Uh, maybe g -E will do this. Uh, they cut squares from the corners of a 12 centimeter by a 36 centimeter piece of sheet metal and fold the metal to make an open top box. It usually uses like what's called a metal break and it bends it, right? Because it's a little tough to bend and fold metal, so they use what's called a break. It doesn't actually break it though, fun fact. All right, we want to write an equation to model the volume as a function of x where x represents the height of the box and v of x represents the volume. Okay, I already said volume is a function of x. That's all good. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to get a marker up here. I don't believe that'll show up well. Here we go. We'll go blue. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can label some things. We got a 12 centimeter. So 12. Whoa. That is, that is uh, a little too big. That's not going to make any sense. Here we go. 12 centimeters this way. I've got 36 centimeters this way. Okay, awesome. Now, x is going to be our height. So if we were to actually fold this thing up, I'd have x. Actually, I'm going to put them here on the dashed lines. x and x. So all of these would end up being my x values. And how do I know that that's my height? Well, when I fold this up, now that's the height of the box. When I fold the other way, I don't know if I can contort my hands. Fold it up, it's okay, right? Um, if we were to draw out a three-dimensional picture of this, I'll do that real quick. There it is. Look at that blue and orange bears. Um, so this would be my height of the box. This would be my X right here, okay? Now, we're talking about our 36. Well, what's the actual dimension of the box then? I'd have to take off... Uh, not only this x value, but also this x value, leaving me with 36 minus 2x. And this may look kind of familiar to you. That would be our longer dimension here. I'll, I'll go um, 36 minus 2x right here. And then the same goes for my 12. I'll have 12 minus 2x. So we'll have 12 minus 2x here. I think it helps have that three-dimensional drawing as well as the flat with the dashed for how we're folding this thing and we're cutting out these corners. So all these corners will end up getting cut out of here, right? All those are going to get cut out and then this whole thing will be, will be folded up. Those will be gone. Okay, so let's figure out our volume here as a function of x because that was what our next move was, right? Okay, so my v of x ends up being all three of my dimensions because our volume formula is, if you don't remember, length times width times height. So I will have, uh, I'm going to throw the x out front. I'm going to throw my x first, my height. Multiplication, I can go in any order. I like throwing the x out front. 12 minus 2x and 36 minus 2x. So there's my volume function. Awesome. I'm going to leave it in factored form. It doesn't ask for it in standard form. Why would I go through multiplying all that? Sounds like the class period is over. All good. You gotta love that sound. You know, it's like, hey, what's coming up next? I'm on more learning. Awesome. So determine if you have a positive volume. Okay, so it's not even asking us for the volume here. It's asking us a lot of different questions. Start it out the same. Um, do we have a positive volume at V of 13? So when our height is 13. Hmm. Well, what can we do there? How about we plug in 13, right? If I plugged in 13, and what I'm really um, wondering here is uh, my, my sign, okay? I don't even care about the numbers. Because if I plug in 13, I'll have 13 times 12 minus 2 times 
13. And then 36 minus 2 times 13. Um, I'm going to have a positive times, and this is negative 26. So that's going to be a negative, so I'll have a positive and then a negative number. And then over here, I'll have a positive number. 36 minus 26 is positive. So what's a positive times a negative times a positive? Well, that's going to be negative. And all it's asking for is do we have a positive volume? So the answer for, for this one would be no. All right? That's all it's asking for. It doesn't say what is the volume. It's just saying is it positive or negative. Well, let's do the same thing for, for a value of 2. If I plugged 2 into each one, it would look like this times 2, 36 minus 2 times 2. Well, that's a weird 2. And uh, what I'm going to have is 12 minus 4, that's positive. 36 minus 4, that's positive. So I have um, positive. I don't have room below me, so I'll do this. Positive, positive, positive. So that's going to be positive. Awesome. So our answer there would be yes. It is positive. Awesome. So that's kind of, that's what we're getting into here is like where things are positive, where they're negative. So now we're really into the inequality. Part C. The volume is a function of x. When is it greater than zero? I think what might help is to look at the graph of this function. So I'm going to draw up um, a rough sketch. You could see this if you plug this into your calculator, but I'm going to go ahead and draw that up for us. All right. So we got that, that uh, lovely little graph down here. This program actually gives me the x, y coordinate plane. I can even do x, y, and z. Woo! I'll pump the brakes on that, though. We're going to stay two dimensions for now. All right, uh, as far as graphing. So here, um, I've got 0, 6, and 18. How did I get that? Well, those are my x-intercepts. If I set the function equal to 0, um, I would get 0 for an x value. Here, I'd get 6 for my x value. And here, I'd get 18 for my x value, right? So that's how I got those. Um, and I know it's a positive cubic function, so I know the general shape of it, right? Well, when is this going to be positive? I'm going to outline the positive with, uh, how about with green? So it's positive all along here from 0 to 6. Would I include those values? No, I would not. So when is it positive? From 0 to 6. Now, it's also, uh, looks like it's positive over, over here too, isn't it? That's also positive. But is that even in our domain? Let's think about that. First off, this definitely, 13 definitely wasn't in our domain because we got a negative volume. That doesn't make any sense. And that's over here, right? So our, our logical domain is only from 0 to 6 because beyond that, I'm going to get a negative dimension. Right, this dimension is going to end up being negative, and I can't have a negative dimension on a box. That does not make sense in application. Had this been just a straight up polynomial inequality, solve it, um, you would include this other portion here as the positive portion. But because this is application, we have to take that into account, and we need to only work with what makes sense in the application of the problem. So that is our only uh, solution there, which could also be written as uh, it could be from 0 to x to 6 is an inequality. Either one of these is fine. This is our interval notation. Uh, generally, my math lab, if we're doing homework in there, it, it uses that form. Okay? Awesome. That was a, that was a pretty fun problem there. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, love me some application, but uh, let's continue. Sorry about the jingle jangle of the keys. All right, we're going to solve some more polynomials. Uh, this one, we're given the graph uh, for the first one here, right? We got this uh, lovely one. It says, when is f of x greater than or equal to 0? Well, that would be um, on this portion of the graph and this portion of the graph. So that would be when x is less than or equal to, right? Because we're since it's equal to 0, um, that means we need to include when it's on the x-axis. Uh, so we have... Oops, or equal to, and it'll be negative 3. And then we'd also have uh, from x, it would be x is greater than or equal to positive 4. Another way we could write this would be uh, from negative infinity to negative 3, parenthesis bracket, and then from 4 to positive infinity. All right. Again, my math lab generally wants this one. You would, you'd have that right there. Lovely. So let's continue here, shall we? I think so. I think 
I think we shall. Um, we were given the uh, the equation, or yeah, the, the polynomial uh, as an equation over here. Now, sometimes we're just given that. We're starting out with these graphs, but you will also be able to tell what's going on with this one here. The music started, but you know, I mean, all right, I'll pause it again. All right, the music is uh, over here at passing period. So where were we? Uh, we've got ourselves uh, the inequality. We've got the graph of it. We want to find out when is this less than or equal to zero. Well, the uh, the parts where I'm looking at, my eyes are drawn to um, are right here when it's below the x-axis, right? But pay close attention. It's also equal to zero there at negative five. Okay. So what are these points? This is at negative one, because that's important, right? This is at negative, or sorry, negative one, positive one, and positive three. So let's write up uh, when it's less than or equal to zero. So it's when uh, x is equal to negative five, and it's when it's between one and three, including those numbers. We can also write this out as including five, and then uh, we'd have from one to three, including it all. Wonderful. So there we go. With the graph, it's not too bad, right? Um, we could, you could see when it's less than or equal to, you could see when it's greater than or equal to, but be very, very careful with that equal to when you have a double root where it's bouncing, right? That's easy to miss. All right, now we're into some rationals here. We got some asymptotes going on. Ooh, we got some oblique slant asymptote in that bad boy. Um, all right, so I've got this function. We want to know when is f of x greater than or equal to zero. So it's greater than or equal to zero when we were including this point here, and then we're all along this, and then also including this point here and all along that. So when is that happening? We've got to tell our x values of when that's happening. So from negative three, including negative three, and it goes on and on and on. Wait, hold up. It goes up, but where is that approaching as our x value? Our x value is negative two. Does it include negative two? No, it's not going to include negative two. That's an asymptote. So it'll be from negative, and th negative three, x strictly less than negative two, and then we'll also have from negative one on to infinity, so I'm just gonna say x is greater than or equal to negative one. So those two right there, and then if I wanna put that in an interval notation, I'd be from negative three to negative two, parenthesis, and then negative one, including it, to positive infinity. All right, there's my, my two representations. All right, we gotta be careful around those asymptotes. All right, we're not including that. All right, and we're including the x value uh, when it's on the x-axis because it's equal to zero. If it was strictly greater than, then we wouldn't have the equal to here. We'd have a parenthesis instead of a bracket. Okay? Uh, so pay attention to those differences. All right, this one. I have, uh, when, when is f of x less than zero? Strictly less than. So if I'm looking at that, I'm looking from this point on down. Same here. Um, we would be an open circle if you're looking at it that way, right? We're not including those points. So I am from negative two x, as, so x is greater than negative two, but uh, it looks like it's approaching the vertical asymptote of zero. So then I'm gonna put less than zero, and then from two, and then, or sorry, from, uh, from zero to positive two. So I'm between negative two and zero. I'm between zero and positive two. I'm not including any of the points. I think that looks fantastic. Let's also put it in an interval notation. This is how my math lab likes it usually, uh, but always pay attention to those directions. So I'm from negative two with parentheses to zero, zero to two. Sometimes I prefer interval notation. Sometimes I prefer, uh, you know, sepular notation. It just depends. You know, the inequalities are sometimes nice. Sometimes just the, you know, parentheses Brackets that works out well too. So it's nice to be a to be savvy with both. Okay. 
So here's a nice little graphic uh, of when we're greater than zero, when we're less than zero, when we're equal to zero, given a polynomial. I think it's a nicely colored and all that stuff. So we've got our positive portion here from negative infinity to negative three on this one. Then we're negative right here, and then we're positive again. And it gives us those intervals, and I think that's kind of nice to, to look at here. So if you'd like to jot something like this down, go for it. I'm not gonna really go any more into this one, but it's just uh, nicely color coded. So feel free to pause and write it down if you'd like, okay? So here it says solve the inequality. We're given our first one here without a graph. Oh my goodness, I'm worried. No, I'm not. We can handle this, all right? Because there's not only me, but there's also, I got a new button and I got, mis got myself on my, uh, my lanyard now with, right next to Mr. Kalos, you know? We got all, got lots of fun buttons here that you can't see, you know, when we're in the video, but there they are. All right, good stuff. Let's keep it going. So there's a lot of us math teachers hanging around, you know? We're ready to rock and roll on this. Let's do this. So I've got, uh, x cubed minus 6x squared minus 7x is less than or equal to zero. So what's it really asking? Well, graphically, it's when it's below that x-axis or on it, right? Um, so perhaps the good way of going about that, like when is it on the x-axis? Those seem like our critical points. So we're gonna find those critical points. And with polynomials, that's our, those are our zeros. When we get to rationals, we got to include our vertical asymptotes, as you know, that, that affected it. Um, if there's any holes, we have, to, we have to include those as well. But we'll get to that shortly. So for now, let's go ahead and find our zeros where it crosses or touches that x-axis. So if I factor this, I can factor out an x. x squared minus 6x minus 7 is less than or equal to 0. Then uh, I would use, you know, what multiplies to negative 7 and adds to, or to negative 6. That'd be negative seven and positive one. Okay, so my critical points now are um, where x equals zero, x equals seven, and x equals negative one. These are gonna be my critical points. Okay, so how do we uh, figure this out? Well, what I like to do, and what we're gonna we're gonna do here in class, it's not just because I like to do it, it's, this is how we're gonna solve it. Um, I'm gonna draw out a number line. I'm gonna pop these points down. So I've got negative one, zero, and I've got seven, right? And all these points are, are where it's crossing or touching the x-axis. In this case, they're going through the x-axis on all these. These are all zeros, okay? So that's what's happening here. All zero starts with a Z if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so how do I know if we're positive or negative uh, from where to where? Well, let's think about like what a polynomial looks like. This is a positive cubic. It's doing something like this. And at each one of these points, it's either above or below. So um, we can try to figure out what's going on using test numbers. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to, uh, to test some values to the left and to the right of these numbers. So I'm going to pick, uh, I'm going to go with a different color. Let's say we got, uh, what's to the left of negative one? Uh, I got negative two. Um, let's say I've got, we're gonna do a test value of how about uh, negative one half. And I'll do something easy in here, we'll just go with one. And then eight would be to the right of that. So orange test values. I guess I don't have to write the color if it's already in that color. All right, so those are my test values there. Whoop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see when is it positive, when is it negative? Well, if I plug these points in, all I'm wondering is the sign. I don't care about the actual number, just the sign. So if I plug in negative two, I'd get a negative, a negative, and another negative. So I'd have negative, negative, negative. For each one of my factors, three negatives is gonna be overall negative. And then for these next couple, uh, if I plug in negative one half, I've got a negative, a negative, and a positive. So negative, negative, and then positive, because negative one half plus one is gonna be positive. This is gonna be overall positive. Right, I'm not worried about the actual numbers, just whether or not they're negative or positive. If I plug in one, positive, this one's gonna be negative, and then positive again. Positive, negative, positive. So that's gonna be overall negative. And then if I plug in an eight, I got positive, positive, positive. That's overall 
positive. So the question is, when is it less than or equal to zero? I can now look at this sign chart and answer it. So when is it less than or equal to zero? Well, I'm gonna be from, uh, that, that'd be negative numbers, right? So from negative infinity, or when x is less than or equal to negative one, and then also when it's between zero and seven. That's where I've got my negative values, right? And in interval notation, that would be negative infinity to negative one, and then from zero to seven. Awesome. You could plug this in the calculator and take a look at the graph and find your zeros, but it's really the same kind of idea. This sign chart's gonna be super helpful when maybe those graphs are a little bit harder to, to, to grab or um, you know they're just it's a little harder to find those intercepts. So I think uh, the sign chart, super duper helpful. All right, wonderful. Let's keep it moving. All right, quick question about whether or not the function is positive or negative given an x value. How about f of five on this graph? Five is right here, whoop, we're somewhere up here. That is going to be positivo. How about negative five? Well, negative five is over here, so our graph is way down here, negativo. How about f of 105? What, I don't, even, I don't even see that, but I know that it's an x value over here, and based on this being a quadratic, right, it says the function right down there, a quadratic, I'm gonna be way over and down, that's gonna be negative as well, nice. Nice quick example. Let's keep it moving, let's keep it grooving. Polynomials and rational inequalities. So we already went for that, that sign chart, right? We just went for it on that one because it's just fun. You know, it's like, oh, you know what? Let's learn something new. But for those of you that are step-by-step -step people, right? Step-by-step, -step, day by day. Uh, here we go. Draw a number line. We did that. Find the critical points. Remember, we referred to those as critical points points. That's our zeros, uh, domain restrictions. We got our holes, vertical asymptotes, all the good, good, right? Uh, we're going to mark them on that, uh, on that sign chart, on that number line, and we are going to notate what they are because how it behaves around a vertical asymptote is different than when it crosses the x-axis and is different than a hole, right? So they're all a little bit different. And we're going to pick our test points like we did, and then we're going to test those positive and negatives. Right, and then we'll, then we'll finish it out by stating the interval. So if you want to take a moment to write this down, you can pause the video, I'll give you a chance right now, and then we'll continue. Here we go, we gotta solve this algebraically. So we're gonna be using our sign chart. Uh, let's see here, so we've got x minus two squared and x plus seven. It's already factored for us, how wonderful. So my critical points are, uh, critical points would be uh, x equals two and then also x equals negative seven, or we can just even just say two and negative seven. How do we just go with that? Two, negative seven. Those are gonna be my critical points. So I'm gonna create a number line, and I'm gonna have uh, two and negative seven, so we'll go negative seven and positive two. Now, what do you think might be, might be smart to notate here? I'm gonna put uh, at the two, bounce. All right, that one's gonna be bouncing. So this is just gonna go right through it, but this one's gonna bounce. And I'm, I wanna remember that, because you're gonna see something here. Okay, let's do some, uh, some test values. I'll do those in orange again. Hope I can remember which colors I use each time. So a test value, um, how about negative eight for this one, because that's to the left of negative seven. Um, I'll use zero here, because that's a real easy number, and then I'll pick uh, three. So let's go ahead and do our signs. If I plug in negative eight, remember I'm only wondering if it's positive or negative. Negative eight would be negative 10 squared, that's positive, and then right here it's going to be negative. So that'd be a positive, negative, bippity boppity, I like it, wonderful. That is overall negative. Next, if I plug in zero, well, this one's, <laughs> we might already know, that that one's always gonna be, first one's gonna be positive because it's squared, right? And then if I plug in zero here, it's gonna be a positive as well. So that's overall positive. And then if I plug in three, again, this one's always gonna be positive because it's squared. And then I've got a positive again, so we're positive, positive. So one thing we might notice is that, hey, it didn't alternate here. It did not alternate. Um, so it stays, it goes positive and then positive. 
but we definitely want to make sure we're not messing anything up on this one as there's a there's a spot for a little mistake an oversight I could see us making so let's talk about when is it greater than zero strictly greater than so from negative seven it looks like it's from negative seven straight on through right but what is it actually right here it's equal to zero we do not want it equal to zero so what we have to do is we have to break it up to uh, negative seven uh, and then we'd have x and then 2 and then we'd start back up again at 2 and go on to infinity so we'll, we'll say um, x is greater than 2 and then we could also write this in interval notation so negative 7 to 2 and then uh, from almost did a bracket oh boy 2 on to infinity and those would be two acceptable versions I like it um, you could even actually, uh, you could write something, another version of it, where you'd go from uh, x is greater than negative 7, but x also does not equal uh, 2. So this, this could also work. Uh, again, your book is going to generally, or your, my math lab is going to ask for this form, so, so there you go. Wonderful, wonderful, fantastic. Not too bad, right? Especially when it's in factored form. Let's continue. Okay, solve the inequality algebraically. Now we have ourselves a rational. <laughs> I'm pumped. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to factor, right? That's what we do with our rational functions. We always really start with factoring. We would do that with our polynomials as well if they weren't already in factored form. We've been lucky so far. So I'm going to have x times x minus 2 over x plus 4. Nothing to do down there. It's greater than 0. So now my critical points, um, I'm going to have, let's see here, I'm going to have zeros. We don't even got that down. Zeros. Uh, we're going to have that at, at uh, 0 and positive 2. We're going to have a vertical asymptote uh, of x equals negative 4. Uh, anything else here? No holes. So I think, I think we're good. Let's toss that all on a number line now, shall we? Uh, so we got negative 4. And I'm going to put vertical asymptote. Uh, we got 0. And we got... Two and these are just zeros. Maybe I'll even put zero, zero. Um, and and remember, if it was a multiplicity of two, then we probably want we want to put bounds there. So we're we're alerted to that. Um, let's do some test values. We've been doing those in orange. So I'm going to pick numbers to the left and to the right. So how about negative five. We've got negative two, uh, one, three. Wonderful. And again, you could have picked negative three. You could put negative one. I mean, I don't know why I picked negative two. I'll go with negative one. That sounds good. Smaller number to deal with. Um, right? You could have picked 100 over here. I don't know why you would, but you could if you wanted. Uh, I find it easiest to put it into the factored form. So let me draw some lines here to keep everything nice and organized. Actually, didn't need to be that, that drastic of lines. Okay, for my negative five, I'd have a negative. Right here's negative. Here's negative. So I've got negative negative over negative that gives me well three negatives would make it a negative if I plug in negative one I've got negative negative positive so negative negative over a positive well the numerator is now positive over positive that's overall positive positive. Um, and then I got one that would be positive negative positive positive negative, positive, so that's overall negative. And then if I plug in three, I've got positive, positive, and positive. A lot of times these po all positive ones are easier to remember without jotting it down, but I'm gonna be consistent with that. And we got positive, so this one does alternate. Uh, so when is it greater than or equal to zero? So we're really looking at these positive areas here, but we gotta be careful with how we are answering this, and we'll once again do it with inequalities as well as interval notation. So let's go for it. Vertical asymptote. So al although this is positive over here and, it, and it's going to be whoop, um, it, it can never equal negative 4, so we cannot include the negative 4, so we would have negative 4x, and then uh, it would be including our 0 here because it is a zero, right? And it's equal to zero at that point. Um, and then I would also have uh, from two on forever. So x is 
greater than or equal to two, and I would include the two because it's on the x-axis. It is equal to zero at this point. It's not equal to zero right here. This is a critical value. This is a vertical asymptote. It's either approaching positive or negative infinity, but it's not going to, um, it's not going to be ever touching negative four. So that's one acceptable. Or we could go the route of negative four to zero, including zero, and then from two to positive infinity. Nice. Alrighty, so we jot down what kind of critical points they are, so that way we, we uh, take care of that in our inequality or, or in our interval notation there. We're answering the question. I love it. This is, this is fantastic stuff. This is a great way to spend a Thursday for Mr. Allen. All right, let's do another example here. This one looks uh, a little more complicated, right? So let's see here. What are our critical values? Well, um, I've got some, I've got a, a vertical asymptote down here. I've got some zeros, some multiplicity of two. <laughs> so our x uh, values, let me go back to that blue so I can be consistent here. So we got x equals negative one. These are my critical points. Um, we're gonna have another critical point at x equals five, and I think I will leave these as x equal, um, and then x equals two. So those are my those are my critical points here. So let's pop those on a number line, and uh, we can even eh, we'll go with the number line, and we'll label it there. So I'd have negative one, and we know that that is a zero. Um, we've got at positive two. That is a vertical asymptote, and it is to a power of two. So we're gonna we're gonna see something interesting there. And then uh, we've got a zero at five, zero, and I'm gonna put bounce. Okay. Um, if you remember, with a multiplicity of two, with a vertical asymptote, they're either both going to negative infinity or they're both approaching positive infinity. So that is uh, it's something to watch out for here with this one. Okay, so let's do some test values, shall we? I think we shall. Um, I've got, how about negative two over here? Uh, zeros in here, that's an easy one to work with. I'll go three and then six, okay? And then I'm going to whoop, pop down some some lines there and uh, let's get to work. If I plug in negative two, I've got a negative right here, right? And then, oh, these are both gonna be positive because they're squared and they're always gonna be positive. Sometimes I look at myself in the corner there and then I'm like, oh yeah, I can look up at the camera. Um, so that makes this pretty darn easy if you ask me. So I'm gonna always have a positive and a positive here because those terms are squared. So check this out, you ready? I'm gonna uh, take all of this, I wonder if I can do this, maybe not, um, but I can just rewrite it, I'll just do that, okay. I'll pause. Okay, so there we go. We got a square term, we know it's gonna be positive. Yeah, the inside might be negative or positive, but I'm squaring it, so it's positive. So now we can just focus on the other one. So I've got, I know this is negative. Uh, if I plug in zero, that's gonna be positive. If I plug in three, positive, and if I plug in six, positive. So what are my overalls? I got negative, positive, positive, positive. All right, when is it less than or equal to zero? I'm only dealing with this sitch right here, right? Okay, yeah, I'm totally just dealing, oh wait a sec. I have a zero, which means it equals zero. So be careful. Okay, let's do this then. So it's going to be, um, let's see here, when x is less than or equal to negative one, and then also when x is equal to five. Nice, nice, you always gotta be careful with those, right? Now it's not gonna be equal to zero here at the vertical asymptote, remember it's going like, whoop, because it's positive and positive on both sides, it's gonna be up. And then what about uh, interval notation? So this would be from negative infinity to negative one, and then I'd have just the, uh, the five there. Boom, done, like it, nice, awesome, fantastic, excellent. All righty, we got ourselves another application problem and I, uh, I spiced it up. All right, we got two chains has quit the rap game to open up a jewelry store named Chains by Two Chains. The company slogan is so much ice, you need, a, you need to wear a jacket in our stores. 
Man, I like that slogan. I like it a lot. Two chains is the numbers man and uh, has calculated the daily profit P is related to the number of clerks working that day C according to the equation P of C is equal to negative 25C squared plus 300C. What is the interval for the number of clerks to keep a profit? Meaning when is this company profitable? Because as if you employ too many people, right, you can employ people to like keep up with demand, right? People want chains, two chains. They want that jewelry. They want that ice. But if you've got too many clerks working, now everybody's just standing around, you're paying people to do nothing, right? So we got to have a balance. That's why two chains made this wonderful little formula here for us. And uh, we want to find out when are we going to be pro profitable? Well, profit, profit makes me think, you know, I'm thinking money. I'm thinking dollar, dollar bills. So I'm going to go green here. And uh, we're in this portion of the graph. It really started out rough there. Let me try that again. I wonder if I can get it. That's a little better. Whatever. Okay, we're going to leave it there. So there's my profitable area, right? That's where I'm going to be making money. Most money. But again, remember guys, mo money, mo problems. Um, so let's see here. What interval will we be profitable? Well, from nobody working to, uh, and we don't want to have no one working because then we aren't making money. So I'm going to leave that open. It looks like at 12. Um, and I'm going to leave that open too. Why would I leave that open? Well, at, at the X axis there, my profit is zero. That's not profitable, right? I want to keep a profit, so I need to be positive. So I'm going to be from, I don't know why I put 12 there. This should be a zero. So from zero, so we can go from uh, zero to C, that's how many clerks are working, to 12 clerks, or we can write it in interval notation with parentheses. Nice. Okay, I like that. That's good stuff. So anywhere between um, 0 to 12 clerks, so really from like 11. If we're thinking, um, if we're thinking uh, in a, like actually hiring people or having people working, we'd be from a, what, 11? 11, 11, or sorry, one clerk to uh, 11 clerks, right? Because you're not going to have half of a clerk working, right? Um, like they just, hey, I'm here for half of it. No, it doesn't work like that. So we're going from one clerk to 11 clerks is where we're going to be profitable. From zero to 12 is what it looks like on the graph. Okay, nice. So again, this would be our really mathy math answer. And then in the application aspect of it, I'm thinking of like whole persons. That's where we're like thinking application. Now this next one says, for what intervals is P of C going to have a profit greater than $500? Well, how about we put in uh, the $500 mark well, that's just going to be a, a horizontal line for our profit being 500, which would be, let's see, this is 300. Is it 400, 500? No, that's not like that. Um, let's check out our scale here. This looks like an interesting scale. Um, what is that scale? All righty. The scale was by 60. That's an interesting scale there. So I went up. We've got uh, 300, 360, um, 420. 480, 540 would be the next one. So we're right in between there. Um, so that's what I'm looking at, right? All righty. So when is, and when am I going to be above that? Okay. So how about I set up um, a nice little inequality? So I want my profit function, I want my profit function to be greater than uh, 500. So negative 25C squared. And then we've got plus 300 C is greater than 500, right? It's strictly greater than, because I want a profit greater than 500, not greater than or equal to. All righty, so let's continue. I got my TI-84 up and running here. Um, so I've got negative 25 X squared, wonderful, plus 300 X, that looks good. I put in for Y2, 500. Because now what I can do is I can use my calculator, find some intersections, and see when it's above that 500 mark, and I can get my X values to tell me where. So we're going to have to adjust our window here, because our zoom standard is not going to do the trick. Um, I know that uh, based on this here, we got 12 as my X value, right? So I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, so I can see a little more of the graph. I'll just go 15. That's fine. Now my Y max, that one needs to be adjusted. 
Um, it looks like on this graph, 900 is the max, roughly. Um, how about we just go with uh, 1,000? I really don't even care. That's 10,000. Um, we really don't even care about the, uh, the actual max. I just want to know, I want to be able to see where the 500 intersects. So this should do the trick for us. There it is. And wonderful. I can see the whole graph. I can see everything that I want. I want to find these intersection points. So second, calc, and I'm going to choose number five, intersect. All right, so it says first curve, so I just pick my first one. It jumps down. Notice that is on um, this line here. And you will also see that my up and down arrows toggle me between lines. So I do want this one, and then I'll arrow over to get close to the guess. Hit enter, and my X value is two. Okay, let's do that. So right here we got two comma 500. Two comma 500. And then let's bring that back up. Let's get the other one. Second calc. I'll pause it. There we go. There's my uh, intersection. I paused so we could uh, save a little time there. Um, and I've got 10, 500. So we've got 10, 500. So when is it greater than $500? Well, I'd be from C being between 2 and 10 clerks. Or I can write this in interval notation between two and 10 clerks. So really we're talking about uh, three clerks, up to nine clerks if we're actually hiring them because we're not gonna have 9.75 clerks or 9.99 clerks, right? Mathy math, application, boom. I'm very sorry that I know this video is getting a little lengthy, but I'm having so much fun with the application. All right, this last one here. It's going to be a you try it. So if you uh, want to try this one, get some extra practice, pause the video. You'll see the fully worked out solution here in just a sec. I so want you to try it, get your sign charts going, all that good stuff. All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause it before I bring in the solutions. All righty, and here we are. So we got our zeros. We do have a double root, right? This right here is a zero. This one's a, a zero as well. And here we have that bounce, zero, bounce, right? It bounces at that one. So that's where we get the positive, positive. Now, if we were to write this in um, interval notation, uh, we would have uh, negative infinity to negative one, bracket around the negative one, and then from one all the way up to positive infinity. We don't have to skip over this because um, it is equal to, right? So we don't have to worry about that one right there. Remember, these are tests. These are our test values. This would be like what we did in the orange, right? These were our test values. Or, sorry, not those. My apologies. These were my test values. We picked these to see if they were pos positive or negative. So I'm circling the wrong ones. There we go. Test values. Could have used three there. But as you can see, these are the ones that they circled, the positives. I like it. It's awesome. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. I apologize for the length. Um, you guys have a fantastically wonderful day. America, freedom, rock and roll, Costco. Um, River Dog Jenny on the gram. Make sure you're following her. River Dog Jenny. Instagram.